But once there was a, um, a poor Jew, and he had to marry his daughter off. His daughter was already older. And um, <clears throat> if he found a good groom, but he needed money for the wedding. And in those days, you had to provide for the wedding. You had to also build a house. You had to give them <clears throat> their necessities. So together with all the wedding and everything, he needed about, let's say, $5,000. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so he needed five thousand dollars. So his wife said, "Go to Rabbi Eli Melech Milizinsk. He'll give you a blessing, and it could be he'll even give you the money." And so he made his way to Rabbi Eli Melech Milizinsk. <clears throat> He was a big, a, a well-known, holy, very, very holy person. This is like about 250 years ago. And he poured his heart to Rabbi Elimelech. And he said, you know, I need $5,000. Let's say 5,000, what is it, Zlatis. I need 5,000 <clears throat> for the wedding. And he said, what, you're in luck. Because I happen to have 5,000, right? This is good. He takes out a purse, and the man is just beside himself with happiness. <clears throat> he got all the money. He takes out a purse, and he takes out three zlatis. One, two, three. And he gives it to him. There you are. So he wants to say to the rabbi, you know, listen, rabbi, I, I said 5,000, you know, but the rabbi repeated it. He knows what the rabbi heard. And he gave him three zlatis, so he's thinks to himself, this is probably a test. He's testing me to see that I'll be happy with whatever I got. So he gives a big smile. Thank you so much, Rabbi. I really, truly appreciate it. The Rabbi said, oh, it's nothing. I just, you know, help another Jew. That's why I'm here. You know, just at especially a wedding. We're starting a new family in Israel. You know, God bless you. And I would like, I wish I could come to the wedding, but I'm very busy. And So he sets up with these three coins. And he's going and he figures, well, you know, <clears throat> at least he'll make the best of what he's got. And he starts to whistle, you know, doo -doo -doo, he's walking down. The... After he's walking for about a half an hour, all of a sudden he sees this young, young man, uh, one of the pupils of Rabbi Elimelech running after him. And his payas are like waving in the wind. Stop, stop, stop. So he said, oh, I passed the test because I went away in a happy way. <clears throat> so the Rebbe is giving me all the money I wanted. So he catches up to him. He said, the Rebbe just gave you three zlotis. He said, yes, he did, three zlotis, but I'm happy with whatever I've got. He said, well, he gave you too much. The Rebbe sent me to tell you that he gave you too much, and he wants to take one of the zlotis back. You have them on you? He says, yeah. It's <clears throat> okay. So now he's only got two. What's he going to do? So he's walking home. He's thinking to himself, what am I going to tell my wife? You know? <clears throat> two zlatis, and then the wedding is coming close. I was really depending on this rabbi. And suddenly he sees by the side of the road, it's a, it's a sort of a cold day, chilly day, and there's these three <clears throat> young non-Jewish boys, you know, maybe 16, 17, sitting by this bonfire that they made on the side, warming up their hands, and he thinks to himself, whoa, no, it's going to be really trouble. You know, I'm all alone. And these three guys, they're, they're probably bored. And one of them comes up to him, and he says, uh, uh, excuse me, would you like to buy a, a purse? So he said, excuse me, a purse. Would you like to buy a purse? Here, you can have a look at it. <clears throat> have a look at it. We're selling it to you, a purse. He takes a look at the purse. It's very nice, you know, beautiful leather. It's got an inlay on it and everything like that. And he opens up the purse. He says, oh, you can, you can look inside. There's, there's uh, a bunch of pictures inside. So he opens it up and he sees that there's German currency. It used to be German marks. There used to be marks. German currency. And he, he understands a little bit about currency. He looks inside and there's a lot of bills there of big denominations. And so the young man says, oh, you can take the pictures too. Take the whole thing. He says, oh, yeah, how much do you want? Three zlatis. Three zlatis, the whole thing is yours. And so he says, three zlatis. I said, well, you know, I just had three zlatis and the rabbi took it back. This is what am I going to do? 
<laughs> he says, uh, well, I've only got two. So the young man, he looks back at his friend, so he gives him a wink. He says, you can have the pictures for two. Take the pictures. He says, really? I can have the pictures? Yeah, take the pictures for two. So he gives him the two zlotis. He takes the money, puts it in his pocket. Thank you very much. And he goes. He goes back and hears the young man laughing. Oh, I thought the Jews were smart. thought the Jews were clever. <clears throat> and he takes the money and he walks. Gets home, takes out the money and starts to count it. It's like up 10,000 zlotis. 10,000. Twice as much as what he needs. Right? If you translate it from <clears throat> Marx to Zlot. So his wife says, listen, maybe that money is stolen money. Those young boys, maybe they stole the money. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe you should go back to the Rebbe. Don't take the money with you. Go back to the Rebbe and ask him, tell him the whole story and ask him what, the, what you should do with the money. <clears throat> what you should do. Maybe they stole it from a Jew. Maybe they stole it from somebody else. You have to return it. You have to. I said, okay, good. You're right. My, my, my wife, you're right. So the next morning, early in the morning, <clears throat> <clears throat> he sets out, he, he, he finishes praying, and he sets out on the same road, and he walk, he's walking about a half an hour before he gets to, to uh, Lizinsk, where Rabbi Elimelech is. He sees the three boys are standing there, those three boys that sold him. And one has got a bandaged head, and the other one is on a crutch, and the other one has got a band, the, 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 the arm is bandaged, whatever. So he says, well, what happened to you? But I'm this, oh, oh. He says, you don't know what happened to us. What terrible luck. Terrible. So he said, well, what, what, what did happen? He said, well, we came back and we had, you know, you took the, the, the pictures and we had the, 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 the pouch and two zlotis. And then they started an argument between us exactly how to divide this up. How to divide up two zlotis with the pouch? We said maybe we'll sell the pouch, and if we do, then who's going to get the money? Anyway, we started an argument between one and the other, and one thing led to another, and the pouch fell into the fire. The pouch fell into the fire. We saw it burning up. Now we've only got the two zlotis left. <clears throat> About we took it out, but it was all burned up. It was just. <clears throat> <clears throat> About five minutes after we took it out, all of a sudden comes this big coach with <clears throat> horses, fine horses, in the <clears throat> accompanied by two big horsemen on horse. And there came out, who comes out? The Baron. The Baron, the landowner of the whole place. And he comes out and he starts screaming, did you see anyone here? Someone stole, stole my pouch. You see my pouch? Where is my pouch? I need my pouch. So we didn't know what to say. He looked, all of a sudden he saw that there was the pouch. It was all burnt up. And it was laying, and he just went berserk. He told his men to beat us, and he beat us, and he broke my arm, and broke his head, broke his this. <clears throat> just for a stupid pouch. How much was the thing worth? Five zlotis. How could it possibly be? <clears throat> and then he took off. And he took off. His pouch had been burned. The stupid pouch had been burned. He's got so much... And so suddenly this fellow realized what happened. That if he would have had the three Zlatis, he would have bought the whole pouch. And they would have told him, the, the Baron, that the Jew has it, he would have beaten the Jew up. They would have beaten him up. But now they only had two, so he bought the, 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 the marks, the money that was inside. And when it fell into the fire, so the Baron thought that the money had been burnt up. He saw the whole thing was totally burned up. <clears throat> so therefore it ended up that was the best thing in the world that he only had two so he went back to the rabbi, to uh, Rabbi Eli Melech and he said listen should I give back the money he said the money belonged to the, the Baron the Baron was a, a, a murderer he stole that, all that money from Jews he said the money is all yours <clears throat> he said well let me give you half so he gave half back to Rabbi Eli Melech to distribute it to the people whatever and he had the other half, he had the money for his pouch. So sometimes we see the things that seem to be bad are really much, much better than if they wouldn't have occurred at all. Have a good day with Mashiach now. See you oh, tomorrow, God willing, at 8.15.